Welcome to Picture Healer Channel. Today I'm going to talk about Chinese fortune telling with numbers, and this is related to Yi Jing divination. I used to visit some fortune telling places. They use rice to predict the future. That always make me curious. How can you tell future just by simple rice grains? After study the Yi Jing divination, it is not mystery anymore because it's all related to numbers. You can find two set of numbers, and you can come up with a Yi Jing hexagram. And from that Yi Jing hexagram, you can interpret the meanings related to your situation. The ancient method of casting an Yi Jing hexagram is by using the stalks or the sticks. And that's a little bit more complicated with a lot of calculation. Later, people use three coins. The three coin method is also popular today. It's easier than the stick method, but it's still a process. So it seems more formal. So how do we use numbers to find the Yi Jing hexagram to interpret the future? Here, let's look at the typical Yi Jing hexagram. The symbol on the left is an example of Yi Jing hexagram. There are six lines. The top three lines is called the upper gua. The bottom three lines is called the lower gua. And each three lines belongs to one of the ba gua, the eight trigrams. And you can see that eight trigrams on the right side. It's a combination of the solid line or the yang line and the broken line or the in line. For example, the first one with three solid lines is called heaven. The symbol of the three broken lines is related to earth because it's all in energy or the female energy. And then we have thunder, water, mountain, wind, fire, and lake. So it's the combination of this bagua becomes a Yi Jing hexagram. So when we want to cast an Yi Jing hexagram, we basically need two numbers, one for upper gua and one for lower gua. So how does a rice divination work? There are many different variations. The basic process is to pinch some rice grains and drop it on a dish. And then we count the number of the rice grains. And that's the first gua. And then we repeat again, pick another pinch of rice, and then drop it on the dish again. And you count the number. That's your second gua. That's the basic idea. So what if the number is bigger than eight? Because we only have ba gua, we have eight trigrams. So when the number is bigger than eight, we have to divide it by eight and find the remainder. So the remainder will be the actual gua number. For example, if you pick 10 grains of rice and you divide it by eight, it's one with remainder of two. So the two will be your gua number. And you repeat it again, maybe this time is 12 rice divided by eight, and it will be one with remainder of four. So the four will be the second gua number. And I've seen people use the first number as a lower gua and the second number as a upper gua. But more recent books all show the first number is a upper gua and the second is a lower gua. I don't think it really matters as long as you keep the process the same every time, it will still work. So now we know the upper gua and the lower gua number. We have another one to find out. That's a changing line. This numbering method is based on the plum blossom yi jing, or you can call it a more freestyle yi jing divination. With this method, there's always a changing line that tells you the future result. So how do we come up with the changing line number? It's very easy. We just add up those two numbers and divide by six. For example, the first time we pick up 10 grand, the second time we have 12. So total is 22. And 22 divided by six is three with remainder of four. So the four is a changing line number. 
And why do we divide it by six? Because we have six lines in the Yi Jing hexagram. And we want to find which line is a changing line. So we cannot go over six. When it's bigger than six, we divide it by six and find the remainder. So now we have all three numbers. The upper gua is two, the lower gua is four, and the changing line is four. And we can go back to the pre-heaven bar gua chart. You can see the number related to the bar gua or the eight trigrams. The left side is a pre-heaven bar gua. You can see the order of the number from the number one, Qian, on the top. The number two, Dui, that's the lake. The number three is uh, Li, the fire. Number four is Zhen, the thunder. The number five is uh, Shun, the wind. Number six is uh, Kan, the water. And number seven is uh, Gen, the mountain. And number eight is the uh, Quan, the earth. So according to this chart, number four is related to the thunder or the Zhen Gua. And the uh, number two is related to Dui Gua, that's the lake. So we put them together, the upper Gua is the lake, the lower Gua is the thunder. So the Yi Jing hexagram is called lake thunder following. This Yi Jing hexagram is called following. And the changing line is number four. We always come from bottom up. The bottom one is the first line or the first yao. Fourth line is the changing line, and the original is the yang line. We change into the in line, the broken line. So after we change the fourth line, it becomes a new hexagram. The upper gua becomes a wind, number five, and the bottom one remains the same, the thunder, number four. So the new Yi Jing hexagram is called wind thunder benefit. And this hexagram will be related to your future result of the question you are asking. And the first or the original hexagram is more about current situation. So now you know how to use number to calculate the Yi Jing hexagram and find out the changing lines. We can look at different variations. You can use the last four digit of your phone number or the last four digit of the car plate number. With this method, we add up the first two digit first. And if it's bigger than eight, we divide it by eight and find the remainder. And then we add up the last two digit. And if it's bigger than eight, we divide it by eight and find the remainder. And for the changing line, you can add all four digits together and divide it by six, because we don't want any number bigger than six. And then we use a remainder for the changing line number. So this is one variation with the phone number and the car plate number. Another variation is by book page number. First, you pick a random page number of any book. If the number is bigger than eight, divide it by eight and find the remainder. And this remainder is the upper gua number. And you repeat again, pick another page number and find the lower gua number with the remainder. And for the changing line, you can add those two numbers up and divide it by six to find the remainder. Or an easier way is to pick another page and divide that number by six to find the remainder. And that's how we find the changing line number. Another variation is to use the playing cards. You pick out a number randomly, and if the number is bigger than eight, divide it by eight and find the remainder. And this will be the upper gua number. And repeat it again to find the lower gua number. And for the changing line, you can add up those two numbers and divide it by six to find the remainder. Or an easier way is to pick another card and uh, divide it by six to find the remainder. 
and that will be your changing line number. And after you come up with uh, three numbers, you can go back to the Bagua chart and the related number and find your combination of your Yijing hexagram. And here is a chart for all 64 Yijing hexagrams based on the upper Gua and the lower Gua. You can refer to charts like this and then find the meanings of each hexagram. And after the changing line, the yang becomes the yin, the yin becomes the yang, you will have a new yijing hexagram. And this hexagram represents a future result. So that's a very basic way of predicting future with yijing hexagram. Most people think yijing is very complicated, but on the other hand, it can become very easy. It can be very flexible too. And if you practice this method frequently, you will be more and more accurate. Thank you so much for watching this video today and see you next time.